speak Amen. this morning. Yes. Yes. Amen. You know, when she first told me about the theme and so forth, and she gave me the option of looking at women in the Bible. And as I'm going through and I'm thinking about it, she actually was standing there when all of a sudden it hit me. I knew who I was going to talk about. Amen. Amen. But the thing about this individual that I'm going to speak to about, she might have only two very short mentions in the entire Bible mm -hmm. and in the chapter in which she is Amen. mentioned. The story actually revolves or revolves around a man in the story. But what she did was so important, was so significant, mm -hmm. that she became greater by what she did. Right. And so for my talk this morning, I want to tell you that I'm going to speak about lessons from a slave girl. We don't know her name. We don't know her name. All we know was that she was taken captive and that she was kept as a servant. She was taken away from her family, her parents, and placed in involuntary servitude. She has every, or had every reason to be angry. She had every reason to wallow in self-pity and just mind her own business. She had plenty of reasons not to make recommend, recommendations to her master's wife. Or, if her recommendations had failed, she could have been beaten, or worse, put to death. But we see a very different reaction from this slave girl. You see, she decided to make an attempt to influence her master to go to the prophet of the Most High God. And this is the very definition of evangelism. Amen. First, I would like for us to go back to the beginning and just get a little information on this young lady. So I'm going to ask all of you as you're seated there, to please turn with me to the book of 2 Kings. Right. 2 Kings, chapter 5, verses 1 through 3. I'll give you a moment. I'll repeat. 2 Kings, chapter 5, verses 1 through 3. And I read in your hearing. Now Naaman commander of the army of the king of Syria was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but a leper. And the Syrians had gone out on raids and had brought back captive a young girl from the land of Israel. She waited on Naaman's wife. Then she said to her mistress, if only my master were with the prophet who was in Samaria, for he would heal him of his prophecy. I'm sorry, from his leprosy. What a prophecy he wrote. Two things, we see two things in these verses. The first one we see is that Naaman was a great and honorable man, right. captain in the king of Syria's army, but that he was a leper. And the second thing that we see is that the Syrian army invaded the land of Israel and took away captives, including this young girl. Mm -hmm. She couldn't have been, if I were to guess, no more than maybe 9, 10, 11 years old. Mm -hmm. She was not an older uh, teenager. She was quite a young girl. Mm -hmm. Now let us look at the character of this slave girl who turned out to be the epitome of the gospel, mm -hmm. the good news. She put her God, the God of Israel, for all to see, and she was not ashamed. Hey, come on now. Come on now. She was not bitter about her circumstances. She may have lost everything, but she served Naaman's wife with her whole heart. She even wanted Naaman himself to get well from his leprosy. Now, let's be honest for just one moment here. If any of us 
were taken from our families. Wow. Would we not feel bitter? Yeah. Would we not be angry? Yeah. Most of us may not or would not be able to find the silver lining in our circumstances that would allow us to want our captor to be made whole again from their sickness. But this young girl was very different. Right. She remained godly in spite of her circumstances. She showed compassion for the one who took her life as she knew it. She remained godly. She witnessed for God and spoke highly of God even though he allowed her to be taken captive. Her faith never wavered. Although her circumstances never changed, for she remained a captive knowing she would never be free again, her faith remained strong. Right. In the book Prophets and Kings, it is said that the way she bore herself in that heathen home is a strong witness to the power of training in her home as a young girl. Right. Now, I had stated a little bit earlier that she, that this slave girl was the walking definition of evangelism. Right. Now, we all know Matthew 28, 19. Yeah. If you want to repeat it with me, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Ghost. And that is what she did in the land of Syria. That's right. Evangelism is defined as the spreading of the gospel by public preaching or personal witness. Come on now. Come on. Did she not do that? Yes. Yes. She was not afraid to let the wife know of her God. Mm -hmm. And the wife, in turn, spoke to Naaman. Mm -hmm. This young slave girl was not ashamed, and she put on public, her, on public display her faith in God and the love of God. Mm -hmm. She was ready to share the good news of God. Mm -hmm. How many of us do not make any attempts to share the good news of God, God with God. family or friends because we are scared of rejection. How many of us think that we are not in the right position or the right neighborhood or among right friends to share about Jesus Christ? How many of us stop doing the Lord's work? She was taken from the home place in a strange land and still found opportunities to share God's love. Mm. If we look at this slave girl and take a lesson from her, we see that there are opportunities wherever God has placed us. Right. If he has placed us somewhere, he has placed us there for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. All that we are required to do is to spot that opportunity and speak out yeah. and act on it. Amen. We need to keep our eyes and ears open for such opportunities which come. That's right. Amen. Now, Naaman was told of what the slave girl told his wife, and immediately he asked his king for permission to seek out the prophet. To seek out that prophet who as far as Syria was concerned, was the enemy. Mm -hmm. The king even wrote a letter to his counterpart, the king of Israel, regarding Aaron Naaman. Now, of course, the king is not sure what to do, and is worried as he cannot heal. Fortunately, the prophet Elisha is made aware of the situation, and he himself goes directly to the king and tells him to send Naaman to his home. Amen. Now, the rest of the story. Naaman gets there. But instead of Elisha coming out and meeting with Naaman, wow. Elisha sends a message yeah. and tells him to dip in the Jordan River. Oh. Naaman gets angry that Elisha did not come out and cure him. And he walks away but he is convinced by his servants to go back. Amen. And he goes to the Jordan River and he dips 
How many times? Seven, Seven times. Yeah. And he is cured. Come on now. Now let us go back into the Bible in the same Second Kings chapter 5. And I'd like us now to go down to verses 15 through 17. So that's Second Kings chapter 5 for any that may have closed their Bible. Second Kings chapter 5, verses 15 through 17. Now let's look at this text together. And he returned to the man of God, he and all of his aides, he being Naaman, and came and stood before him, Elijah, and he said, Indeed, now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Yes. Now therefore, please take a gift from your servant. Yes. But he said, As the Lord lives before whom I stand, I will receive nothing. And he urged him to take it, but he refused. So Naaman said, Then, if not, please let your servant be given two mule loaves of earth, for your servant will no longer offer either burnt offering or sacrifice to other gods, but to the Lord.